you're living now, man. Nothing's guaranteed. Your life yeah. is could could end abruptly at any moment. So you might as well enjoy the journey in each step along. Hello, hello, and welcome aboard another episode of the Captain's Lifestyle Podcast. This is your captain speaking, Taylor Morgan. On today's episode, we have another special guest. His name is Kerry Jack. Kerry is a lifestyle entrepreneur, author, podcast host, biohacker, eco-warrior, martial artist, and humanitarian striving to make a positive impact on this planet. As a biohacking human performance expert, Kerry has coached elite entrepreneurs, professional athletes, Olympic gold medalists, Stanley Cup winners, Fortune 500 CEOs, and more. Kerry is the founder of The Happy Hustle, whose mission is to educate, inspire, and entertain while reminding you to enjoy the journey, not just the destination, destination as you happy hustle for a life of passion and purpose. Kerry, welcome to the show, man. Yeah, Taylor, thank you for that intro, and I'm honored to be here, brother. Sweet. So let's dive into just, you know, very briefly, your wide-ranging background. <laughs> yeah, right. Wherever you want to take mean, that. Well, I kind of like I'm all over the place, or I used to be more so, but I got some questionable advice from my uh, Kung Fu master early on. He was like, Kerry, always have seven plates spinning at once. Therefore, if one fall, you have six plates. So I was <laughs> like, oh, that checks out. Um, <laughs> Interesting. And so, you know, I kept like my hand in multiple pots and was, you know, an entrepreneur and a professional actor slash model. And then I was in the eco game trying to, you know, solve global issues and, and, and philanthropy and, you know, service. And, and I just, I kind of grew up, you know, um, just doing like sports in my, and the best I could in, in, in every single area, but, um, yeah, what just kind of becoming an entrepreneur, um, I figured out how not to do it, you know, and I think probably a lot of your audience can resonate with the old entrepreneurial burnout. You know, that's kind of what happened to me, man. You just like grinded my face off for hundred plus hour weeks and, you know, just working like a dog for profit and success and, you know, sacrificing everything in the process, my faith, my family, my fitness, my fun, you know, all for, for the paycheck and the, the big win. And, you know, I was basically it came to a head when I was in New York city, um, wearing the fancy suit and tie. I know now, if you look at me, I look like a damn caveman. You can appreciate that. Taylor. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's why it was like, with that beard, <laughs> Oh, I know we'll get along. Um, so anyway, I got to this point where we were, you know, soliciting this seven figure funding deal and, you know, ink partnerships with Microsoft and IBM and had, you know, this huge potential for our, our big tech, you know, startup and my brother and business partner and best friend and I were, we worked so hard to get it, but man, when, when the money, you know, basically came on the table with that five-year clause of, you know, you basically have to be beholden to the business and the shareholders, you know, rightfully so, if they're going to give you that much money, they want to know you're committed. Right. So it all came to a head there, man. I just feel like I, I'm a, this pit in my stomach was just wrench so tight and I couldn't accept the money. My brother and I like had to step out of the room and kind of broke down crying, man. And just were like, dude, we, we can't sell our soul like this. We, we have to make a pivot. So we said no to the money, folded the tech startup, which is still a very valid idea. Like we built this algorithm around data and like feedback. And anyway, um, I moved to Bangkok, Thailand, you know, for like 10 months, figured out a better way to work and live. My brother went to back to business school and, you know, he's a big ecopreneur as well. And, you know, over there, I just figured out, okay, there's a way to be happy within the hustle. And that's kind of how the happy hustle was born. And yeah, I'm happy to elaborate more, but I'll pause there. <laughs> yeah, I love it. So was that your first business, the tech startup? No, no, definitely not. You know, a good entrepreneur has a lot of failure uh, as fertilizer, right? <laughs> For sure. So, so let's talk yeah. about what led you down the path of entrepreneurship. Well, I just, yeah, you know, I'm the product of two entrepreneurial parents, you know, both hardworking middle class yeah. um, parents, you know, anything we wanted when we were kids, we had to earn ourselves, you know, even lunch money, you know, nothing was given, everything was earned. So it was just 
that kind of mentality said, okay, I'm going to go cut some lawn. I'm going to do the lemonade stand. I'm going to create my own soccer camp business. And then, you know, I don't usually talk about this, but I, I, then I turned to all that like hustling for, you know, money into like a negative and was started going down the wrong path and like, you know, like doing illegal things and drugs and gang shit and just violence. And like, I know it'll look it, but I was do up to no good for a long time hustling, you know? And I was like, damn, this is not the right route either. You know? So I've always been an entrepreneur and then I just kind of use my powers for good now. And like happy hustling is more where I stay at, you know? Yeah. Was there a specific moment that you can recall that, switched your mindset or is it the culmination of a lot of different things from going from like illegal hustling to positive like for yeah and not just good that hustling? yeah oh. and not just that aspect of it but also just you know working solely for the money as opposed to working for passion and purpose yeah i mean i think the, that moment truly was when we achieved what we set out to do to get that deal you mm -hmm. know um, that moment of shit, this isn't what we want. You know, we don't like, this isn't fulfilling. I think we're all on this journey of fulfillment and freedom. You know, when it comes, when it boils down to anything, it's those two things, right? Yeah. You want to be, you know, proud of the things you do and you want to be free and to choose what you do, you know, both creative freedom, time freedom and financial freedom. And, and I realized that path didn't didn't necessarily lay out that future you know with the tech startup and this big data play and all this like fancy suits and bc money and swanky meals trying to wine and dine and like <laughs> you know dude i live in montana now I, i'm barefoot most of the time you know perfect getting out out there like just camping hunting fishing doing outdoor things and like trying to give back to people around me. Like that's where my real happiness comes from. Not all that other materialistic BS. So I think the moment was there. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, not necessarily my listeners, but I think a lot of just society in general would hear that and be like, why would you do that? Like, why would you turn that down? Like, wasn't that your goal? Like, what would, what do you say to people who either have a nine to five or started their own entrepreneurial journey who are in it, or maybe not in it, but maybe they started it for good purposes, but then they continued down the wrong path of only following the money and they're successful, but they're not fulfilled with their lifestyle. What do you say to those people? I, I would just say it's really not worth it at the end of the day, <laughs> you know, like sacrificing in every area of your life for your work is not worth it there's a better way. And, and that's kind of what led me on this path to just shout from the rooftop balance equals happiness, like yeah. put that on my damn tombstone, you know, because that's like, really, where I, that's like what I know to be true, you know, is when you're balanced in both your personal life and your professional life. And I actually break it down to 10 different areas. I call them the 10 alignments. Happy to dive into that too. But, you know, that's where when you are balanced in each of those alignments, quote unquote, then you just watch yourself skyrocket with happiness. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I definitely want to get into those 10 things. But first off, let's define balance because how I define balance, um, because I think a lot of people think or hear work-life balance and they're like, no, I'm trying to build a successful business. There is no work-life balance in that. And I'm like, my definition at least is no, like work-life balance is a spectrum. And it's like, you have a fulcrum and the, you know, whatever the long part is called, those of you who are just listening are going to be like, what the hell is he talking about? But you've got the <laughs> fulcrum. And so this is the, the balance part. And then this is work, this is life. And you can move the fulcrum to, you know, whatever fits your current, lifestyle, but there has to be that, that form of balance in some way. So how do you define the proper balance? The proper balance, I think differs for each person, you right. know, there's a spectrum, both, you know, in your personal life, your professional life, you know, in your spiritual life, all these different areas. Um, I think 
it is, it's going to vary. Um, so I don't see it as a finite definition, rather an ever moving target that exactly. constantly evolves, you know, um, it's not like 50% work, 50% life yeah. for everybody. Like I yeah. said, that point can move. It could be exactly 65, 45. Yeah. So how do you suggest people go about finding their optimal work-life balance? Yeah, I think it really is based on your goals, first and foremost. Like, I think a lot of people, and this is a cliche analogy, but it's the damn truth. You know, they work so hard to get to the top of the mountain, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, I got to the top of the mountain. And then they look around, they're the only one there. And it's like they've isolated everyone. And oh, by the way, the view sucks. They want to be on the other mountain. And then so they got to go all the way back down, climb all the way up, bring the homies with the family, yep. the friend. You know, it's like, I think for for me, it's getting crystal clear on what that goal is for you and then reverse engineering it. You know, a lot of people I think go about it the opposite. Yep. And for me, I'd rather set the target. Um, like if you're shooting a bow and arrow and you don't know your target, you'll miss every time, <laughs> you know? So, so you must get clear on your vision. For me, I knew I wanted to be a location independent lifestyle entrepreneur who yep. makes money online and then, Tomorrow, man, I'm going fly fishing the whole day with my buddy. We're taking this drift boat. We're going to slay some trout. Like the fact that I can do that is exactly the lifestyle that I design on a Thursday. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think you have to get clear on what your goal is. Then you can define the balance to get there because you can be happy within the hustle. You know, you, you don't have to wait. Like, again, I think people, what they do is they, they say, Oh, when I retire, I'll do that, you know, or I'll go travel. And it's like, you're, you're living now, man, nothing's guaranteed. Your life yeah. is could, could end abruptly at any moment. So you might as well enjoy the journey in each step along. it. Yeah. And th to bring up an extreme example, somebody like Gary V, he yeah. still has work life balance, <laughs> but his work is significantly more than the life, but that is what yeah. truly fulfills him. He is absolutely happy hustling. Like that's all he talks about is, you know, being happy, chase yeah. happiness. Yeah. Don't, who gives a shit about the money if you're not happy? Cause like you yeah. said, what's the point? Um, yeah. so I agree. You got to begin with the end in mind. Have you read, uh, the seven habits, Stephen Covey? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the exact same analogy that you just yep. said, you know, yep. stop climbing the ladder of success. If you don't know where that ladder is going to end up, you know, like you said, you get to the top of the mountain, you don't like where you're at. That's, that's your own fault. So how do you mm -hmm. recommend people set their goals or, um, you know, figure out what they want? Cause I think a lot of people have this vague idea in their mind, but not a lot of people have actually defined it and said, okay, this is the legacy I want to leave. I want to accomplish this. I want to be remembered for that. How do you recommend people go about that? Yeah. I mean, breaking down your goal is, is simply a, what do you want? You know, like, okay, what do you want? Do you, do you want to have a million dollars liquidity in the bank? Okay. That's fine. Whatever your goal is. And, and you could set multiple goals in multiple different areas, but what do you want? First and foremost, B, why do you want it? Right? Like the, why is the fuel to your fire to persevere past the inevitable adversity? You know, if your why is not strong enough for that million dollars, you're never going to get it, you know, like it's, it's just, hard. Yeah, it's it, dude, nothing worth having is comes easy, yep. you know, and, and then, you know, see is when you're going to actually achieve it, you know, mm. like you have to have a deadline. And, and this isn't rocket science, man, you know, Taylor, you know what it is. And I'm sure your listeners know what it is, too. It's just then executing, <laughs> you know, That's like the hard part. doing the doing the work. Um, and then again, that comes into actually breaking it down into micro goals. Okay. So if you want a million dollars in 12 months, how much do you actually have to make, you know, by like 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, whatever, six months, you know, nine months, break it down into micro goals. I mean, we're, we're using the financial, you know, million dollars example but even still like breaking it down reverse engineering it is how you set goals properly in my opinion mm -hmm. you know but that's that's how you do it so now let's get into the 10 what did you call them the 10 alignments alignments yeah. of balance 
It's it's basically the 10 alignments of being a happy hustler. Okay. Yeah, that, that's what I call it. Yeah, yeah, let's dive into that. Yeah, man. So it's an acronym. Um, I found that people couldn't remember all 10. Uh, so I was like, all right, something's got to change. I got to uh, change around a couple of adjectives here. Mm-hmm. So I made it an acronym uh, called the Soul Mapping. S-O-U-L-M-A-P-P-I-N. No G, uh, because that would be 11. Um, so S stands for selfless service. And selfless service, basically, if you, if you follow Tony Robbins at all, one of my favorite quotes by him is the secret to living is giving. And I truly believe that. So S is you're giving your time, your money, or your expertise in some capacity. And what I do with my tribe of happy hustlers is we measure one to five. Five is an A. You're crushing it. You know, you're happy hustling. One is an F in each of these alignments. So as I go through these, I urge your listeners, you know, the captains out there to really take stock in where they're at in this alignment. So do you volunteer at least once a week? Great. What, you know, are you given to, you know, others in need? Great. You know, like maybe you are a five then if you're never worried about anyone, but yourself, you're a one, you know what I mean? So as I go through these, I urge you to just think about where you rank and then, and I do this every Sunday, you know, so it's like, it's not a con, it's not like, oh, I'm good, I'm balanced. It's like, no, every Sunday I measure myself in these 10 areas and then I prioritize change accordingly for the upcoming week, you know. So, so the first one, self with service. Oh, uh, op- just, oh, just want to interrupt you real quick. Um, when you say you prioritize whatever category, because I believe, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link, you know, for the fitness example, if yep. you can deadlift 600 pounds, but you can't, you know, put your arm over your head, like you're not, <laughs> you're not fit, right? So yeah. you're only as strong as your weakest link. So when you have these 10 categories, and one seems to be dropping, does that become your primary area of focus over the next week? Or how do you how do you balance out the 10, the, the 10 different principles of happy hustling? Yeah, so each each one of those alignments has a corresponding task. And so the goal is to do those 10 tasks every day. Mm. Okay. So for selfless service, it could just be simply, you know, volunteer 20 minutes today, you know, or call someone who you can add value to with your expertise or donate a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever, 10 bucks, whatever it is. Right. But each one has a corresponding task. Gotcha. So the S selfless service, you know, I have this whole blissful balancer. It's like a fridge magnet, put it on my fridge. Oh, I went through. It's like a habit tracker kind of thing. You know, then you go through and then you track, Oh, okay. I did my thing. I I, I volunteered check, you know, then, Oh, moving on to something I'm sure you, you know a lot about, which is optimized health, you know, Oh, optimized health. If you don't have your health, what do you have? You can't have your hustle in any capacity if you're not healthy, you know? And I mean, I see, a lot of people dropping the ball here and then they try to pick it up in their business. And it's like, Oh, why don't you have that energy? <laughs> doesn't to work perform? like that. It doesn't No, you know, man. Um, so optimize health, simply, you know, move the body minimum 25 minutes every single day in some capacity and just eating whole like organic foods, you know, blender juice or, you know, cook like raw, healthy fruits, vegetables, whole foods. It's not that, you know, it's not that difficult to, to really, when you boil it down to just, okay, here's healthy habits. Here's not. So always yeah. optimize health, measure where you rank one to five in that alignment. You know, what would you say, or what are some criteria that you would say people can judge themselves on? Because when I ask people like, yeah, like, are you healthy? They'll be like, oh yeah. But I think they're going off of, you know, Western medicine's definition of health, which is just simply the (laughs) absence of disease. But as you and I know, like if you wake up in the morning and you, you know, feel groggy throughout your whole day, need multiple cups of coffee, but you have no diseases, you're not healthy. So what would you say, you know, qualifies as optimal health? Well, again, I think it's, it's different for each person. You know, there's a spectrum. For a 85-year-old happy hustler, it's going to look different than a 25-year-old happy hustler, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think you have to have your own definition of optimized health in your mind. And again, it's a goal. Maybe you want to be 6% body fat. Okay, that's that's a five for you. 
So knowing you're a 12 now, maybe, maybe you're a three, you know, and you want to get to that next level. So you got to set goals for each of these different alignments and what that looks like to become that five, you know, but I, I really do think it's, it's very personalized. You know, there's not one, you know, it's not one size like, fits all. No, it's not, you know, that. <laughs> Imagine yeah. that. Yeah. Right. So, so that's the, the second alignment. Oh, you is the third one. You is un, unplugged digitally. So you got, mm. you know, of the soul mapping, we're on S O U, you unplugged digitally. This is something where I see a lot of people, you know, completely missing it. <laughs> they're, they're plugged into their devices 24 seven watching their smart TVs, you know, on their iPads in their cars with all this, you know, EMFs and toxic blue light and recycled air. And it's like, you wonder why you're not healthy. You're not getting outside, you know, you're just plugged in all the time. So yep. you, I, I try, I don't try, I don't even like that word. Um, 60 minutes every morning is uh, non-negotiable, like no phone time, 60 minutes before bed, no phone, no, no devices, reading or whatever, journaling, but no devices. And then on Sundays, uh, a 24 hour digital detox you know, like nothing, you don't touch your stuff. So you measure like, those are some tasks, you know, that I associate with that, that alignment, you know, for you, maybe you want to start with just 20 minutes. Don't touch your phone, you know, like in the morning, 20 minutes in the evening, but these little things can make a big difference in your overall, overall health and happiness. So that's you. And you just measure one to five where you're at right now. Are you always plugged in? Are you always, you know, on the grid and getting beamed by EMFs. Okay. That's a one, you know, if you're unplugged and you're getting out and, you know, away from your devices, maybe you're closer to five. So that's you. And for people L, who don't yeah. know EMFs very briefly, we don't have to go in depth, explain what EMFs are and why we should care about that. Cause I feel like this one flies under the radar. A lot of times I feel like a lot of people aren't even aware of the effects. Yeah, EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies, basically the radiation that's emitted from your devices, from your microwave, from your, you know, Wi-Fi, from your smart TV, um, that breaks down our cells on a DNA level, like very small, like it getting inside our cells and, and breaking them apart to make it overly complex. Um, but if you think about a microwave, that's essentially when you put your phone up to your ear, you know, the, your phone is emitting microwave radiation. Yeah. So that's an EMF, basically. And if you guys think like he's crazy and this is all woo woo out there stuff, <laughs> the cell phone companies literally put a warning on their devices that say, do not hold this up to your face. But what does everybody do? They pick up the phone, they put it right up to their face. So I always talk on speakerphone or using some wired headphones. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And as simply just unplugging your Wi-Fi at night, you know, Mine's on an on off switch. Oh, perfect. There you go, yep. man. So it's like that, that alone, people think, oh, but that, well, I won't find the signal in the morning. <laughs> yes, it will. Yes, it will. You'll be fine. It'll turn right back on. You know, and even if it doesn't, it. that's, that's probably better for you anyways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So th that's you. Then you got L this is loving relationships. So, you know, without the love in your life, you're not going to be happy. You know, you got to have those close personal relationships, both with your friends, your family members, and your lover, you know, your, your personal relationship. Like, and, and for me, you know, I, my fiance, Steph and I, like, this is, this is always a, a constant evolution as well. Like, you know, we have something um, that we call the love calendar, where it's like this whiteboard and we track, you know, one to 10 every single day, Hey, where's your love, your love tank at? Is it a, you know, is it a nine? Um, I ask her every evening. She asked me if she put a nine and I put a seven, maybe, you know, maybe we had some great sex and it was super passionate and we had a date night, but like maybe something happened. Mine was a seven, she was a nine. We'll put it at an eight. We'll, we'll put a heart around it. Cause five or above is a heart is a, is a love day five or four or below is an X day. And then at the end of the month, we can see basically where we rank in our love calendar, you know, and the goal is to be 90, 10, you know, like you're, you're going to have some stuff. It's just, that's life, right. you know, but like, if you can get to 90, 10, you know, 90% of the days are love days, 10% are not 
Okay, great. It's a good relationship. Now, once you start sliding below 80%, then you might want to reevaluate what, what needs to change, or maybe do you need to change your partner, you know? But these little things, because I really believe what you can measure, you can manage, you know? So when you're measuring these different areas of your life, especially your relationship, you can continue to improve. So that's just one little tactic that we use. I got plenty others, but you know, the, the L for loving relationships is a big component. Yeah. That's a, that's a good little, I was going to say like tip or hack, but I think it's much bigger than that. Uh, because again, I think this one flies under the radar. Are you familiar with the Harvard happiness study? Yeah. 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 So they found that the single biggest correlating factor to long, healthy, happy lives was the quality of your connections. But I think so many people stay in relationships where they're not, you know, fully happy and they don't know how to actually communicate with other people. So that, that calendar thing is amazing. The, the system and mm -hmm. what you just take an average of, um, or a percentage of after oh. the month is over. Yeah. I mean, you just basically look at the percentage, you know, how many days of 31, you know, were love days. Mm. Um, okay. There was 28 days. So then you kind of average it out or I guess percentage it out, you know, mm -hmm. to make sure it's over 90% or 90 or above would be ideal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, that little, you know, those little things can make a big difference and, you know, really, like, I'm not perfect. I don't claim to be perfect in any of these areas. You know, I'm just a, a student of the game, man, just figuring it the heck out like a, a reporter, will you, who's just, okay, I'm, I'm doing this, this is working, you know, and, and I'm doing this, it's not working, you know, like little things um, can make a big difference. But definitely, you know, that one, I saw some good progress with in my relationship. Yeah, last thing I'll say on this, because I want to get to the other ones before we run yeah. out of time. But yeah. Um, have you considered what would happen if you get a 90 10 percentage wise, but they're all or close to fives? Because, you know, five oh, versus like barely eight, nine. Plus, yeah, is a big difference. Yeah. yeah I, I know you said you got other things relationship wise in place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's definitely something like every Sunday we do what we call like a bear talk, you know, where we basically just, hash out what should I start doing what should I stop doing what should I keep doing you know for each of us so then we can pivot accordingly to boost that those those scores every day and then we have you know a love journal where I write something I'm grateful for about her she writes something she's grateful about me mm -hmm. plus weekly date nights you know stuff like that just the usual like those stuff you know it, it makes a difference but yeah the the weekly talks can help boost that score yo Taylor here so I'm sure you've heard me harp on sleep and basically every single podcast and video that I put out because it truly is that important. And I'm excited to announce that I've created something very simple and very tactical that you guys can use to start improving your sleep immediately. In fact, it is the fastest way to improve the quality of your sleep and therefore the quality of your life with amazing results after just one single night of implementation. Seriously. This is the same nightly ritual that I personally use, and it's the same strategy that I teach all of my high-performing clients in the Captain's Lifestyle program. It's the 432130 method, and I'm giving it away to you guys for free. All you have to do is follow the link in my Instagram bio or in the show notes of this podcast, and I'll send it over so you can start sleeping better tonight. But please do not sleep on this offer. It's literally free, so no excuses. Go do it. And sweet dreams. Got the, the first four. What's number five? Yeah. So we got soul. That's selfless service, optimized health, unplugged, digitally loving relationships. Now we got the mapping part. All right. And this is, and basically you think about it like this. This is your soul's map to the promised land to achieve blissful balance and avoid burnout. Mm -hmm. You know, that, and the M is mindful spirituality. And I'm sure you can get behind this one. And whether you, you know, believe in one God or another, that's not, I'm, I'm not, necessarily religious i'm spiritual and you know i believe in a higher power i pray i meditate the important thing is just to do something damn it you know <laughs> you got to do something like whether it's a gratitude practice or a breath work practice or a meditation practice or going to church or whatever you do you have to believe in a higher power in my opinion you have to have faith and um you know this one 
simply could just be meditate 10 minutes every day, pray before every meal and, and write out your gratitudes every single morning, five to 10 things you are grateful for. That can be it, you know, and, and measure where you're at right now. One to one to five in this area. And, and if you're not where you want to be, make a change, you know, but that's, that's M mindful spirituality. Love it. A is abundance financially. And of course, you know, you got to have, you got to have money. If you want to be a happy hustler, if you want to be a captain, you got to be able to cover, you know, your, your expenses and some, you want to, you know, be able to, you know, invest and save and, and really spend wisely. And it wasn't until I focused on financial literacy, then everything changed for me, you know, because prior to like educating myself on finances it it was oh kind of like the old hope plan which hope is not a plan you know it's like it's not a plan you get if you want to actually make more money you should know the difference between a stock and a bond or you should know like what what an IRA is and how you can invest in an HSA and be tax sheltered or create an S corp. Like you have to educate yourself. And here's the thing, guys, you know, everything is at the touch of a button right now. Like you, that if you don't want, or if you're not financially where you want to be, first and foremost, you have to take accountability for where you are. And then secondly, you have to take, you know, action <laughs> and educate yourself. And so this one is all about just investing, saving, and spending wisely. Um, you know, for me, I'm still on my journey. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed, very blessed with everything. And I feel very abundant. However, I, I have huge goals, you know, and things I want to accomplish. So it's just, you know, the, the journey is different for me, for each person. You know, some person would say, oh, you know, like you can, you sold over, a million bucks on Zoom discovery calls this year. Great. You know, that's a win. Some people will say, oh, I make that in a week. You know, right. like it's all relative, right? Like we just sold out my Montana Mastermind event, you know, last last week alone. And it was a great win, you know, over 27K in the bank just from last week. But again, I know guys who are making that in an hour, you know, so it's all relative. Like Gary Vee, he's making that in an hour, right? Yeah. Like for one talk. So it's all relative, you know, and I just think with financial abundance, you know, your goals, or at least, you know, what you want for your lifestyle. So you have to just set up your, you know, your system to save, invest and spend wisely based on your goals. So that's yeah. A. And don't compare yourself to anybody else. Cause like you said, it's so individual yeah. to what you want. Like, exactly. Um, do you have any favorite resource that you would suggest to people to get more, more financial, financially literate? I would read the book. I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi. That's a great book. I mean, I should be a damn affiliate for it as much as I recommend it, but that book alone is like, I bought one, like invested in one stock and it's netted me over 10 G's from one stock that I, he recommended in the book. You know what I mean? So it's like little things like that, setting up a system, you know, like I'm debt free, never, like I only buy stuff on cash. You know, if I don't have it, I don't buy it. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like, there's some principles that are timeless and, and he does a great job just laying out the system in that book. Hmm. Interesting. Um, I, yeah, I don't want this to turn into a, a whole financial podcast, but you only use cash. You don't take advantage of, of credit and like, Oh, different... no, no, no. I, I use, I use credit cards. I have. Okay. Yeah. But I have you don't credit like, cards. you don't go past. But if your... I don't, yeah. If I don't okay. have it, like I never have a balance, you know, right. like it always gets paid off. Like, but I use it just to leverage points. Yeah. Of course. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was my question. I was like, Hmm, that's, that's interesting, but <laughs> no, no. In the book, you'll learn which cards to get too. Cool. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Next up. All right. P personal development. So I know you're all about this man. And I'm sure all the captains out there are too. You got to be growing and evolving or else you're shrinking and dissolving. Right. <laughs> and for me, I, I focus on a, just a 90 minute system of personal development every single day. You know, I do 30 minutes of reading in the morning something inspirational and educational, 30 minutes of listening in the afternoon, like the captain's podcast, you know, you, you, this is a great resource um, to plug in for those 30 minutes time. And then 
30 minutes of watching something visually stimulating, educational and inspirational. And the reason I do that in those different, you know, mediums is because we all learn in different ways. And I often draw inspiration from this content that I acquire. And it's very important, maybe right now, 30 minutes, like 90 minutes seems steep right now. Okay, start with 15, guys. 15 reading, 15 listening, 15, you know, in the afternoon or in the evening watching. But you'll notice yourself, oh, I, I'm one more page. I want to read a little more. Or, oh, okay, one more episode, you know, or, oh, mm -hmm. one more documentary. But that's how you kind of get yourself out of that rom-com, like Netflix binge, like, oh, I just, I got, I watch all nine seasons of Game of Thrones, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> So anyway, that's, that's the first P. Love it. Yeah. The next P passionate hobbies. This one, one of my favorites, you know, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs miss it on this one as well, 100%. because they just forget to have fun. You know, it's like, what the hell are you doing it for? I'm going fishing tomorrow. That's my passion and hobbies. I, I train my martial arts, you know, on, on Mondays, Wednesdays, you know, I got my fishing, I got my hiking, my camping, you know, I do my fun things, the things that fill my cup, you know, because then I can give from my overflow. Sometimes I do passion hobbies with my partner step. We'll do dance class or we'll paint, or, you know, stuff like that, like with your loved ones too, but you have to have fun in your life. So that's an important element. So measure one to five. If you're not having enough fun right now, you know, that's something you can change. Right. And the, the, the key to all of these is, is, is simply this, you must prioritize each of these different alignment tasks with the same importance, mm. right? So your, your fly fishing, you know, day tomorrow, AKA what I got planned gets the same priority as this podcast interview with you, Taylor, as the same priority as my date night with my fiance as the same, you know, so everything gets equal weight on the calendar. That's how you can stay balanced. Hmm. So then what if something overlaps? Like what if something then, comes then I up? tell my assistant, what the hell's going on with my calendar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Cause how I recommend my clients overcome that is one of the first things we do is set your priorities. So like core values, for example, I believe is a big part of that. If you have core values in the mission statement and something comes up, like if one of your core values is family, or even if it's not a core value, even if you, even if you just, you know, value your relationships, which you should, and you're in a business meeting, but you get a call from your wife, for example, and you know, your kid is hurt or something. It doesn't matter what's going on in the meeting. You're going to go see what's going on with that kid. But the opposite should not be true. I feel like, like if you're in a conversation with your wife and your phone rings and you just answer it no matter what, it's like, well, what's really more important to you, your connection with your wife or somebody else's priority that's on the phone? So how do you recommend people, I guess, balance those priorities? Well, to be clear, like if I'm on date night with my fiance, I don't I my phone's off, you know. So that would never happen. I wouldn't mm -hmm. take that, you know, or at least if it does, then I get scolded like a schoolboy, you know? <laughs> so, and, and again, if it's, there's a family emergency, sure. I'm dropping everything, you know, like that there's extremes on both sides, but yeah, you know, having your calendar blocked out. So, you know, what you're doing in each, you know, time slot is, is an important part. Planning ahead. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So how, how long in the future do you plan ahead? Ah, I mean, I have stuff probably six months out, you know, scheduled, not all the way in detail, but like, you know, my schedule is pretty consistent every week, you know, I, I guess a better way to phrase that would be how, how long in the future do you know how your days are going to be structured? Mm. Well, I have just reoccurring, you know, commitments to myself every week. So it's just, okay, Monday, Friday's this, you know, just Tuesday block this Wednesday, this meeting, this, you know, like this, mm -hmm. okay. Checking with the tribe here. Like it's just, you know, on repeat. So I guess it's scheduled out pretty far. Yeah. I mean, listen, I didn't create this lifestyle business to be shackled by it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's not, that's not, that's not what I'm in it for. I can do what the heck I want. I'll cancel my day if I have to, you know, mm -hmm. move stuff around if some, if a good opportunity comes up, you know? it's all 
you know, that's why we go into business for ourselves, right? <laughs> it's to have right. the freedom, you yeah. know, and the spontaneity. So, yeah. And so because you've actually defined and like written out your goals, what it is that you actually want, instead of just keeping it kind of random and vague in your head, you can make that decision if this takes precedence over something else. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. Moving on. All right. Cool. So that was, that was the second P. Um, now we got impactful work. I, and again, you know, work is one of the cornerstones of our lives. And if we're not passionate about it, and I even like, I know I use that word a lot and I'm sure you do too, but like, here's how I, here's how I look at it. You got passion, which is self-facing you know it's it's basically your inner calling that was you know that signal that you keep getting oh do this do that like i know there's a higher power like instructing me for this I, it's my passion I, I must you know serve in this capacity that's to me passion is that inward facing now you got purpose which is more outward serving right like what are you doing for others? How can you solve problems? How can you make a living, you know, by doing something that you are passionate about, right? So you get your passion, your purpose, and then you have the positive impact that you hope to make, you know, especially social entrepreneurs out there. Like, it's not enough to just be passionate and have purpose. If it's not making a positive impact, we won't be fulfilled, you know? So I think with impactful work, it's very important for everyone to take stock and really are they excited to get up in the morning and get after it or not? You know, like, and if yeah. you're not, that's okay, but you can recognize it and make a pivot, right? The awareness piece. I know you talk about is awareness. First step. You must know, okay, this is the problem. Now I need to fix it. So this is a really important piece to the puzzle. And I, I recommend people, if you're not happy in your JLB, okay, start a side hustle while you still have security and solve people's problems. And I break it down like this, and this is um, my good buddy, Roy Vaden from the Brand Builders Group talks about these three questions and I'll pose them to all the captains out there. If you wanna be successful in business, you need to know these three questions. There are at least the answers to them. One, what problem do you solve? <laughs> Simple as that. That's all business is, solving people's problems. Two, who exactly do you solve it for? And not just demographics, but psychographics. Like, you know, you can't be everything to everyone. You got to be specific. And then three, what is your uniqueness and how can you exploit it in the service of others? So what are you actually uniquely qualified to talk about? What did you research? What did you put in the reps for? You know, answer those three questions. You got yourself impactful work. Boom. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with how important impactful work is. And that's why I chose to work specifically with, you know, impact entrepreneurs. I would always turn down anybody who just wanted to, you know, get better for selfish reasons because I'm all about health, happiness, and productivity. I don't think you'd be healthy or happy or as productive as you could be if you're not making a positive impact. I just, I really think the way to maximize that, one of the ways is to, you know, make a positive impact in people's lives, animals' lives, the environment in some way, shape or form. So. Amen. Amen, brother. Love it. Anyway, now we're bringing it home with N and this is nature connection. Okay. You know, getting outside, tapping into Pachamama, our beautiful planet, like walking barefoot, going to the beach, swimming in natural bodies of water, like sitting in the park, going camping, doing things outside. I, I think we're losing touch as, you know, human beings with our natural world. And we spend a lot of time in our, you know, cage on wheels. And, and we spent time in our offices with fake lights and temperature you know, and control. Temperature, comfy, yeah. 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 So it's just, you know, and that's really one of the reasons I live in Montana, you know, to be around more nature, less people, you know, I've lived all over the world, man. I've lived in Bangkok and Barcelona and Brazil and LA and New York and Chicago and Florida, all these places this has the most nature. This is where I'm at, you know, but I recommend all the captains out there, you know, Colorado is a great spot. Um, <laughs> just try to keep it on the down low Montana. Don't go to Montana. A lot of grizzlies. So many <laughs> grizzlies. They eat everyone. Anyway, the point is 
you got to get outside. That's nature connection. And that's the N in soul mapping. And so again, I highly recommend all y'all just measure where you're at in each of those 10 alignments and then pivot accordingly. And I actually, if you go, if you want to just do it pretty simple, you can just go to carryjack.com and backslash quiz and just take the damn quiz. It takes 60 seconds. You figure out real quick where you're lacking, you, you know, in those different alignments. And then you just say, oh, you know what? I'm lacking in maybe my optimized health. I need to talk to Taylor to, to get the, the shredded biceps like you and, <laughs> you know, or I need to maybe volunteer more or whatever. Like um, you figure out where you're lacking, right? That you could change. So those are the 10 alignments of being a happy host. And that link takes you to the soul map and quiz online that yeah that takes you to the the quiz um we actually i'm actually going super deep i mean shameless plug here but we are doing like a master class all on the soul mapping um very soon i don't know when this comes out but if you're listening to this right now you, there's more chances than not a, an upcoming master class where i'm basically breaking down all of those in detail and so much more um that's just the happy hustle.com backslash soul mapping Cool. And I'll put all the links to everything we talk about in the show notes. Uh, so you guys can, can check that out, which I highly recommend. I, the soul mapping that sounds, you know, right in alignment with everything that I talk about, but uh, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about the importance of getting out in nature. Is that yeah. something that I enjoy? That's something that I think a lot of people just kind of brush past besides the, you know, just, the, besides the fact of just being out in nature and the happiness that comes from that, you know, the, there's a reason why forest bathing, bathing is a thing to, you know, relieve stress. What are the physiological benefits of actually connecting with the earth, swimming in natural bodies of water? Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, a ton. I mean, just tuning your circadian rhythm to the sun is such a lost art these days, you know, like getting proper vitamin D, not in a supplement form. Mm -hmm. And if you live above the 37th parallel, you're not getting enough vitamin D. Like even me in Montana being here, we, we get different sun than you guys in LA, you know, a different exposure. So our vitamin D levels are different. So you have to know kind of what is required based on your geographic location um, for you to be optimal. However, I'll just say, you know, getting cold regularly and, and natural bodies to water. I know you're a fan of ice baths and whatnot, but you know, we have natural ice baths here, you know, snow melt comes down the river, ice cold. I do an ice bath every day. And then I get, I have my own sauna. So I do an infrared sauna, you know, so hot and cold thermogenesis, hopefully if you can do it in nature, um, you know, even better, but just being outside grounded, to, you know, Pachamama, barefoot, I know you're about that. Mm -hmm. Like, there's so many benefits. Um, they go far beyond my scientific understanding. You know, however, I know how I feel after I do a inverted sun gazing exercise, you know, where I look at 45 degrees off the sun, it really helps my eyesight. You know, a lot of people don't know these little things that this that the earth give us, you know, and, and just like, I, we grow our own food, I have a garden here, you know, like, being in the soil, growing my own food and vegetables, you know, I mean, I still, and I hunt my own meat. I, I go bow hunting every year. Like I got my elk that lasts me all year. I fish my own fish. You know, sometimes I'll go to the store too. Like that's, I'm not completely primal. I wish, but you know, those type of things make a difference. I think we're so we've lost touch with our natural world, with our food source. You know, there's this factory farming, all these GMOs and, genetically modified, you know, substances and processed crap we put in our body. We wonder why we're so obese and overweight and, and unhappy. It's, it's largely this food and, and this, this lifestyle that we live. So that's my rant. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. It's we're unhealthy as a Western society because we're going basically the exact opposite of how human beings evolved and how human beings are supposed to live. Like yeah. you said, we stay inside in our wi-fi and bluetooth bombarded homes with all our devices looking at artificial blue light temperature controlled we never get hot we never get cold we're always comfortable we never challenge ourselves we eat garbage food and then you, you take a pill to expect that to you know change everything or you go to the gym which is still bombarded with emf and all these cleaning chemicals expecting that one hour 
to offset the other 23 hours. It's just not how it works. Um, as you obviously know, you have to live holistically. It's about all of these different things. It's about soul mapping. Every single one of those categories is important. Um, yeah. The, Amen. And the, the fact that nature is slowly deteriorating just breaks my heart, which is another mm -hmm. reason why I wanted to work with impactful entrepreneurs because my favorite clients to work with are the ones who are making some sort of environmental impact, sustainable brands. So talk to us a little bit about Ecopreneur and everything you got going on there. Yeah, so I really do believe that capitalism is the only solution to climate change. Like it has to make financial sense for yeah. this change to truly take place. And what my brother and, um, and myself and also his girlfriend and, and my fiance, we basically started a company called Sustainable Breakthroughs that has another entity underneath it called Ecopreneur Evolution. And we have essentially outfitted these 40 foot shipping containers um, and we drop them off in rural undeveloped third world countries. Oftentimes um, we just did a, a pilot in Uganda, Africa, and inside these shipping containers is a shredder, a melter and extruder for plastic waste. Mm. Also included is a 3D printer. So what these shipping containers essentially incentivize these, you know, savvy, um, impoverished individuals to collect the garbage, bring it to the ship container, shred it, melt it, chop it up, extrude it into 3D printer filament, and then they can actually upcycle that plastic waste into something of utility. Uh, fishing reel. We got people making solar, you know, panels and wind turbines and plates wow. and bowls. And now we're making bicycles, which is super cool. Cause now there's this whole like bicycle economy where, oh, you can rent them, you can sell them, you can create businesses from them. So it's super cool. And then inside the shipping container also is a laboratory, uh, computer lab. So we basically incentivize these social entrepreneurs at the ground level to solve their own problems. And we do seed investments where we fund them with competition style, and then we get a percentage of their, of their business, and then it reinvests into a VC fund. So essentially that's Equipreneur Evolution. And it's, um, yeah, it's super exciting. My brother and Maria, his, um, his partner are working on a project in Costa Rica right now. Um, so that's the next one. And we got some really cool things lined up for that. But, you know, that is a way to, again, cheesy, but rather than just giving a man a fish, you teach them how to fish, you know? And so that's the whole model behind it. Wow. Yeah, that is incredible. Um, definitely got to have you uh, or your brother on for a round two, because I, I definitely want to dive into that and everything that's that's going on there. Um, yeah, have him. He, he'll, he knows all of the nitty gritty details on all of it. So perfect. Yeah, sweet. Well, yeah, we're we're coming up to the hour here. Uh, we barely even scratched the surface of everything you've got going on. Um, so we'll probably just have to do a round two sometime in the future anyways. But uh, yeah, man, let's do uh, it. After I move out to Montana, because that lifestyle that you described, your own, you know, you're growing <laughs> your own food, natural ice bath. That sounds amazing. Yeah, man. Well, just you can come, but uh, let's, everybody uh, else go to Colorado. <laughs> Colorado's the <laughs> shit, guys. So many grizzlies here. Yeah, man. Cool. All right. Well, tell people where they can find more about you and all the multiple things you got going on. Yeah, I mean, everything's on my website, just carryjack.com. Um, or, you know, if you want to do that masterclass, it, it's gonna, it, I'm definitely gonna over deliver value. Um, that, that's basically the happy hustle.com backslash soul mapping. But yeah, IG, you know, um, like all the social medias, like Facebook and LinkedIn, Carrie Jack, you find me there. So yeah, any way I can add value, anyone wants to reach out or feels called to connect. I love, you know, connecting with people and here to serve. Love it. Yeah. Guys connect with him for sure. At least follow him and, and everything he's doing. If you like what I'm doing and you're listening to this podcast, absolutely. You will connect with this guy. We've got, uh, we've both got amazing beards. He's got his hair a little bit longer. <laughs> I'm catching up. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Carrie, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. If you could 
I'll steal this one from Tim Ferriss. If you could have a billboard with a saying, phrase, picture, whatever on it, what would what would that say or be seen on it for millions to see? Balance equals happiness. Boom. Yeah. Simple. Leave it at yep. that. All right, Terry. Yep. Thanks All right, again. Peace and love, y'all. Don't forget, live the captain's lifestyle. Peace. Thank you.